quickly go on. I just want to see what the next question is. Um, oh, okay. Um, this shows a day old hatchling. How are we going for time? All right, let's see how far we can get through here before we have an ad break. Okay, so what have we got? We've got one day old hatchlings. Um, there's diagram A and there's diagram B. And it says which diagram A or B shows precocial development. Now the way to remember it is like this. Okay, and I'm going to go through this because I, if you listen now, you won't ever have to sit and swat it. You will know it, you will remember it, and you will get the 10 marks in the exam. Here we go. Okay, pre co -shil versus al -shil. Okay, pre co -shil, think of the word precocious. And this means when a child is too grown up. Okay, so when we say a child is precocious, it means they're brats, actually. Right, so um, they, they, they like, I don't know, 10 going on for, for 35. They think that they can just do and say and whatever, everything. So precocial means completely developed or fully developed or the developmental stage is great. In the case of our little animals and, and our whatevers that we are looking at, Okay, we are looking at animals that can fend for themselves shortly after they've, uh, um, shortly after hatching or birth. Okay, so hatching or birth, they can fend for themselves. They, are, they have a body covering, which means that they can regulate their own body temperature. They can find their own food. They can run away from predators. Okay, little baby crocodiles can bite your finger off. Okay, so that they can fend for themselves. Whereas altricial, think about all is done by parents. So, altricial, think of all, is done by parents. Precocial, precocious brats. <laughs> okay. When we say a child is precocious, it's not, it, it means that they really are difficult. Okay, they, they sort of think they, as I said, 10 going on for 35. Right, altricial is going to be naked when they're born. They, are, they can't feed themselves. Fend for themselves. Maintain body temperature. They are completely dependent on parents. Okay? Precocial. They can fend for themselves, they can feed themselves, they can run, they can do whatever they want. Altricial, everything is done by the parents to keep this little organism alive, okay? Which means that if they're hatchlings, like they, they come from eggs, all right, it means that the egg doesn't need to be that big and it doesn't have to have a huge amount of yolk because when this little thing hatches, mommy and daddy are gonna take care of it. Whereas if they're precocial, they're going to have more yolk in that egg so that they are more developed so that when they do hatch like a baby duck, it can waddle along, it can swim, it can find its own food. You understand what I'm saying? So precocial, eggs going to, the yolk uh, is going to be larger because the animal's got to be more developed when, it's, when it now hatches. Whereas altricial, naked, useless, can't do anything, Walk, they're blind, they, they really need everything that parents can do. Okay, so let's quickly have a look here. So we say, right, give one visible reason that the diagram supports your answer. Well, um, if we just look here, what do you see? You see open eyes, body covered with feathers, therefore regulate temperature, reg body temp, okay. Um, nice little claws, um, legs can run, fend 
Uh, I'm sorry, not fend. Look for food. Okay, little independent number. So independent. Okay. Whereas, look at this. Eyes are closed. No body covering. Therefore, can't reg body temp. Okay? Um, helpless. Can't fend for itself. So, just look at that. Any one of those would have given you a mark. Which animal A or B needs a greater degree of parental care? I mean, for heaven's sake, people, it's going to be B. I mean, that's a mark for nothing. Give a reason for your answer. Because there's no body covering. Their eyes are closed. They're helpless. They can't move. They can't fly. They can do nothing. Okay? Um, state whether animal A is oviparous or ovoviviparous. I'm going to go through that. I want to give you a table that you need to know. Okay, and we're going to do it today so that you know it. You don't have to learn it. And then explain why hatchling in diagram B would have a smaller yoke, there we go, than the hatchling in diagram A. Well, because the hatchling in diagram B is more developed when it hatches. And therefore, it's going to need more yolk and more nutrition so that it can be more developed when it hatches than in diagram B where it needs a smaller yolk because its development is going to depend on the parents taking care of it and greater parental care. Yolk sac. Okay, let's look here. All right. We got oviparous viviparous and ovo viviparous. This is a combination, okay? So oviparous, think of the O for oviparous and O for outside, okay? And also O for egg, because that's what an egg looks like. An egg is round, okay, or oval shape. So round for an egg. So oviparous, the egg laying. Viviparous, think of IV for viviparous and IV for live. So the bubbas are born live. Then oviviviparous is a combination. So you have eggs that are laid inside an oviduct, or in the case of a, a seahorse, the male keeps the eggs, the female lays the eggs in the male's little, uh, um, ovi, like a little pouch, and he then releases sperm into the pouch. Okay, so then clearly you're going to have external fertilization, but for the, for the seahorse, but Literally, most of the time, you're going to find oviparous is going to be internal or external fertilization. You're going to find viviparous is always internal, and ovoviviparous is going to be internal. All right, so here your eggs have a shell. Here there's no egg shell, okay? Um, what did I write? Cell. You see, I'm trying to write too fast. And then the shell, there is a shell, but it's very thin. Why? Its function is not to prevent dehydration, which is what an oviparous egg actually is. It's there to prevent dehydration and protect the baby, or the, the embryo, developing embryo. Whereas viviparous, it's in the uterus, and it's protected by the, the, the amnion and the amnion fluid and all the rest of the wonderful things that we have there. Where an oviviparous, well, the egg is sitting inside an oviduct inside the female's body. Okay, except for the seahorse. So what you have there is that um, the, the, it do, the little embryo doesn't have a placental link to the, to the females, to the, to the mother, to the female. So it lives off the yolk in its egg, and when it's ready and it's developed enough, it hatches. And then the female literally gives birth to live young. Okay, so let's go down a bit more. Here we have, so we, this has an eggshell, no eggshell, a shell, but the shell is very thin. It's not there here to, to stop anything happening. Then here the eggs are laid outside the body. Here the, eggs, the, the embryo is inside the uterus from fertilization. And here the egg is inside the oviduct. So that's why oviviparous is, is a combination. Here nutrients are from the yolk sac. Here the nutrients are from the placenta via the umbilical cord. And here the nutrients are from the yolk sac as well. Okay, then, uh, let me think. Um, uh, here, eggs 
hatch outside the body, female body. Okay, here you're going to, the females give birth to live young. Okay, and here the, um, the eggs hatch in the oviduct and female gives birth to live young. Okay, let's put one more in here. Um, an example of a, 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 um, oviparous shot your birds, fish, anything that lays eggs is going to be oviparous, okay? Viviparous, oh, jeez, you mammals. Us, mammals. So any mammal, lions, tigers, cheetahs, elephants, buffalo. I'm just thinking of all the animals that we have on on. on uh, um, uh, our notes. Okay, but really think of the big five. They're, we're all mammals. All your chimpanzees, your, animal, your, 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 your monkeys, your pigs, your cows, they're all mammals. Okay, and your oviviparous snakes, um, which are reptiles, so you can actually just put reptiles. So think of, a, of an example of a reptile. Um, lizards, crocodiles, etc., etc. Um, but there's certain snakes and certain reptiles that are going to be oviviparous. So let's just go back here. So it says oviviparous and oviviparous. Remember, oviviparous is a combination of oviparous and viviparous. And oviviparous, the O for egg. Okay. Explain why hatchling in diagram B would have a smaller yolk than the hatchling in diagram A. Well, where's my thing? The, the hatchling in diagram B, okay, the development isn't that great. It doesn't have that much development. So if you look at this poor little thing here, it can't feed itself. Uh, let me get another color here. Can't feed itself, okay? Um, it has no body covering, it, the eyes are closed, it is helpless, it is poorly developed. Any of those would have given your mark for that question.